Thank you very much, sir. Uh, His Excellency is Professor Abdullah Malik, Dr. Mukhtar. Uh, one looks after the food security, other looks after the student security. And then Khalid Mahmoud Khan, sir, sir, thank you for coming from Faisalabad all the way to join us. The Sabar Hayat, always uh, a great motivator and a great uh, helper. Thanks, brother, for coming. Jingo Akao, my friend, is online. Uh, we were there in China. Uh, uh, so he is the executive director of ANSO, and I happen to be their international advisor. Yusuf Zafar Saab, thanks for coming, Sergi, uh, former chairperson of PRC, Dr. Mukhtar, Vice Chancellor, Skill University Professor. Hey, thanks for coming, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Ali, thanks, doing a great job. And a lot of friends, Dr. Ashraf, my teacher, and then Mudassar Saab, uh, member of Publishers Commission, Baluchistan, and former chairperson PCST. Thanks all for coming. I'll be very quick, uh, spending a few minutes, I need your attention why we want to talk about this subject. Uh, specifically, uh, a lot of friends online, uh, uh, we have a participation of uh, close to 200 now. Uh, we are very happy because we uh, gave opportunity to international friends to, to join this event because we are talking about something pathogen beyond the borders. Understanding the concept of cross species infectious diseases, what happens? Uh, will you play or do you want me to play? So, what is it? Very quickly, only for 10 minutes I have. Uh, interspecies transmission, you call it, uh, you know, cross species infectious disease or interspecies transmission, host jumping disease, like you had corona and still there are. Uh, uh, people are working on it, why it happened, how it happened, and all this, and what are the reasons behind it. Uh, uh, so, we should understand why we want to have this event. And not only in Pakistan, this is now being washed across the uh, globe. Uh, many people are watching it, and they're talking about it. Uh, public health, emerging diseases, one health approach. Usually, you know, uh, human uh, doctors are doing their job, veterinary people, plant scientists. So here is when we talk about environment, human, animal, all together as one health. And to, to exchange views and thoughts, how can we... And I, I forgot to thank Dr. Iftikhar from MEXT representation from MOP. Uh, Antimicrobial resistance, vaccine development, economic impact, and wildlife ecosystem, etc. All these are linked when you talk about, you know, uh, infectious disease transmission from, from host uh, interchange. Uh, so some examples, those that you got from, uh, you know, you, uh, interchange with human and animals from HIV to avian influenza, to Vela, Ebola to, uh, you know, MERS to SARS to COVID to bovin sponge and uh, West Nile virus, all this and many, many more. So we had already experience of all this, thanks to modern knowledge, artificial intelligence and others, machine learning, that now we can quickly uh, go identify, uh, diagnose, and then vaccine. The steps had been reduced from a decade to years. And maybe in next 10 years, you will be in months, inshallah, you will be able to not only uh, know the causes and the reasons, but how can you, uh, uh, you know, do all this. The steps that they are there, from origin to transmission, to reservoir, to public health, to prevention, to one health approach. These are, this is how you can define it. This is how zoonotic diseases have an impact on you, on all these disciplines that they are there. So, and what are the factors? We will be discussing in our conference with these three days, uh, both nationally and internationally, uh, ecological, behavioral, and genetics. These are the three major factors that uh, are responsible somehow from ecological, uh, you, you understand the biodiversity, climate change, host vector dynamics, and then in behavioral, human behavior, animal behavior, vector behavior, how they, you know, do all this for, are responsible in a way. Uh, genetic factors, of course, there, we recently had a meeting in Malaysia uh, about vaccine and genomics nexus. Uh, personalized medicine, you all know about it. So it's a huge debate. Someday we may talk about this. Uh, now, the role of wildlife and domestic animal for all these infectious diseases that we, are, we will be talking in the next three days. For wildlife, from reservoir to emerging diseases to maintenance evolution, 
impact uh, vectors and environmental impact coming to the domestic animals. There are, uh, they are a source of amplification and transmission sometimes. They transmit uh, transmission is vector, reservoirs, uh, intensified agriculture, foodborne diseases, pets and uh, human uh, risk. So these issues that are there close to you, we'll be talking to, you know, uh, uh, enlighten the policymaker about those issues that they are there. Uh, because sometimes they, they, they are focused in one line. So we will be discussing all this and we'll have a recommendation. We have group works, we have several things. And finally, recommendation that will go to WHO, to UNESCO, to many international organizations to work on it. Oh. It is going back. Can you go forward? Uh, the role of pathogen, of course, uh, then you face other uh, severe problems like antibiotic resistance. Uh, the reservoir, what they do is uh, they are sometimes intermediate host. Their genetic mutation, behavioral factor, environmental changes, and finally, uh, when you have it, the 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 disease themselves they evolve themselves, and you you face antibiotic resistance, which will be one of the major problem for the human in the next coming decades. So that's what uh, all scientists are worried about, and they are working on it. How to adopt, how the, ad the pathogen adapts to a new host. Uh, because of the time, I'm really going very, very quick to finish it in time. Uh, the genetic mutations, uh, uh, antigenic variation, host range expansion, co-evolution, uh, you know, uh, selective pr uh, pressure, then immune in uh, invasion strategies, and tissue or dropping. So those are, those are the issues that are somehow responsible uh, why pathogen has a new host, why they come to human, because you provide them a very good facility inside, very rich uh, uh, microbiome that you have. So uh, just a case study, Ebola is one of that, 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 that came from bats to human in our lab. Dr. Ali is, uh, you know, working on the all bats diseases, uh, viruses that are coming and we are collecting bats from uh, not only Pakistan, but with Chinese Academy of Sciences, we have a project and we are working on it. So uh, like from bats to whom, how this happened, Ebola is one case and uh, uh, probably many others, bushmeat trades, uh, because the consumption of bat meats, bat meats by villagers in the region, then it was human to human in transmission. Uh, they, there was some control measures and challenges and impact and the consequences was high mortality rate, healthcare system overwhelmed, economic impact, 2.2 billion GDP and social disruption, et cetera, et cetera. Same what we had in Corona too. Uh, food security was an issue and education disruption, psychological impact was the major one, specifically in African continent where we had this problem. Uh, so how to prevent and mitigate all this? If you uh, start from surveillance to early detection, research and monitoring, habitat preservation management, and then responsible wildlife trade. Many countries, they, they you know, uh, eat. Uh, Chinese is a very good market in having uh, consuming wild animals in their market. Uh, then vaccination and disease control, biosecurity measure, public health legislation is required. One Health Approach, again, in international cooperation. That's why this meeting is uh, sponsored by ANSO, uh, that we, we talk internationally. This is not a local issue or a national issue. This is a global issue, which all we all need to have to sit together and talk about these issues that we are confronted with. So the strategies could be uh, from surveillance to vaccination. Go next, please, because of time. One Health Approach, very briefly, very quickly, uh, when we talk about One Health, we, we start from the disease to environment uh, stewardship, interdisciplinary co uh, collaboration. Here we have uh, uh, today invited all kind of related discipline people from uh, human health specialists to uh, veterinary scientists to plant scientists to everybody, even the social sciences people that how if pandemic happened, how you control it, how you, you have the strategy and all this research and surveillance, et cetera, education and outreach. Uh, and how it helps the public, uh, you know, one health, early detection is possible to, if you work interdisciplinary, understanding the disease dynamics, prevention and risk, cross-sectoral collaboration, environmental protection, response, 
And that is how you finally, uh, you all work with antimicrobial uh, resistance management. Uh, that's how a platform is for you, that you interact, you network, you discuss with each other, and you can work on it. So for that, you need a global collaboration. This is one example, like uh, Tasawar Hayat said, this is the fifth one. And we had several with other international, uh, you know, countries uh, uh, from Ansu platform. From, uh, you know, uh, so because this is a global nature of thing, so we need to work on all these issues together. Because no one is safe unless everybody is safe. So we were poor, rich, the virus, uh, even if you are vaccinated, you will have problems. So you have to, uh, equity, there is what we should be talking in one of the, uh, uh, by presentation, one of the person. So for that, we need global collaboration and all these issues. If you collaborate together, this, these are several examples that were there, uh, you can really resolve the issue. So for that, that is why we all are sitting here. And thanks to the two key individuals, Kausar Abdullah Malik and Dr. Mukhtar, uh, one in education, because we need an awareness among the, I will sir, remind you again that I requested you to have a accreditation council for life sciences also, because everybody is allowed to open whatever department they have be it microbiology, be it biotechnology, there's nothing required. You need a license for MBA, but uh, for computer, but you don't need a license for uh, a life sciences department. Open it wherever you want. Work with wherever virus or disease you want to work. No check. So sir, I remind you again in last meeting too, I requested the same that you should have an internet, uh, 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 a council a life science accreditation council that looks after you know this issue that uh, that's very important so future outlook some recommendations based on all the workshop that we have done that how can we really uh, work from undetected reservoirs to asymptomatic carriers to genetic diversity etc on one side the limited surveillance on other side and finally vaccine development all these can work together and they can find solution to the problem to the forthcoming pandemic. This was not the last one, remember. Not, this was not the first one and this was not the last one. Expect many more because of climate change, because of pollution, because of several human induced things in the nature. And specifically prepare because your lab has no surveillance, no, no control, uh, uh, the students work on it and they don't understand the biosafety, biosecurity issue that they may be confronted with. So finally, uh, this emergence and behavioral change and viral evolution, all these three, you have to work in a, in a coordinated form in a, in a, you know, one body, all these, what, what I call it, one health specialist, that you can find solution to all these problems. The takeaway for the, from this meeting that you, we expect uh, that you will be having some knowledge about cross-species transmission, uh, zoonotic origins, and uh, you know intermediate host, one health, viral evolution, challenges, what we face in all this, and surveillance and detection, uh, preventive measure, global cooperation, future trend, and future preparedness. This is what we expect that this workshop, this conference will be discussing in the coming three days that we are here. Uh, we'll go next, next, uh, next, let's, let's close it down. I thank you all, specifically His Excellencies on the stage that you joined us and all those, uh, Professor Hifa coming abroad, joining us, Professor Mukhtar and everybody else. Thanks for coming. Thanks you very much.